Hi guys, here's another video. I've got this Breville VTT431 stainless steel dual toaster. That's the unit there. Had it for a few years. And uh, there's a small problem. Let me just show you. Let me just put the plug in. Show you what the problem is. Okay, so this side, the left hand side, um, it doesn't eject when you put toast in. And this blue button here is supposed to let it eject, but it doesn't, it just sticks down. And if you show you this right hand side, this is what's supposed to happen. You press the button and it ejects. And when the toast reaches a certain temperature, it will eject. But this left hand side here, it's just uh, stuck, it just stays down. It does heat up if you put toast in there, but you've got to remember to take the toast out in time. So I'm going to be having a look at that today. Okay, just disconnect it from the mains. And first thing I've got to do, because they're all a lot of crumbs, just remove these crumb trays, supposed to empty regular. Get a buildup of crumbs in there. So I'll just empty these crumb trays. You can just, um, I'm going to use my vac, but you can just knock them into the dustbin or into the sink. I mean, I'll just put these to one side. And uh, as you can see, I'm shaking the unit as it still holds a lot of crumbs. And I'll just get me a vacuum and uh, back that up. Okay, so what I've got to do is remove the screws. There's uh, 10 screws holding it in place. However, there's four snake eye anti tamper screws. Obviously, Breville don't want you to go inside of their unit for safety. And I'll show you the tool for that. And like I said, the, the other six are just normal screws. I'll just show you the model there VTT431. Okay, so this is the actual snake eye key. That's the actual tool to remove the four outer screws. The other six are just normal Phillips, positive drive, cross heads. So I'll just speed this section up because there's quite a few screws in here. So I'll just fast forward this section here. Okay, just knock the screw out so I can show it to you. That's the security screw there, the anti temper screw. Or the snake eye screw, if you're going to call it. Just show you that. And then um, I managed to buy this screwdriver set from Poundland, which uh, has the snake eye key. Don't know if they still sell it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is remove these um, selector knobs or switch knobs, control knobs. And then once they're out, just gonna remove the top, like so, take the top off. And it's still attached to the unit by a earth and two control wires. Just show you inside here, there's quite a bit of uh, dust uh, crumbs still inside here. So what I've gotta do, let me highlight, I've gotta remove this earth and these two connections here, one here, and one on the other side here, and they just plug out. A bit difficult to get to and film. Let me just show you, show you me popping the one off here. And then here you can see me just removing the earth strap, just to get the hood out of the way. Just put it to one side. So that I can show you what the problem is. If you look on the right hand side, which is working, the PCB there is in place, and it, when you push it down, it locks the solenoid, which holds it down and releases to when the toast has reached the right temperature. If you look on this side here, I don't know how this happened. The PCB is out of place, so it's not going to lock the solenoid down. So it's all loose. And uh, if you look around here, this wire is sitting underneath the solenoid, which holds the toaster down. You see there, so that's in the way. Don't know how this has happened. So, to show you there, that board's in place. This one's not, it's sitting slightly up. 
So it's just a matter of pushing it back down into place. It fits into this slot here. And you just clip it in. Just push it down. And you heard that clip into place there. And it's pretty rigid and I'm, I'm not sure how it actually came out in the first place. So regarding this wire here, um, I'm just gonna use a nylon cable tie to hold it down from the underside. Here's the nylon cable, cable tie here. And I'll have to fast forward this section because it was quite a bit, it took quite a time. See I'm just fishing it through the bottom here. And you can see I've got the cable tie in place. And that should hold the wire out of the way. Just show you that, give a better angle so you can see. It's tied out of the way there. It shouldn't affect the heat because this is the bottom of the machine. Don't think it gets that hot down here. You see there, it's well, well out of the way now, not obstructing the solenoid. Okay, it's just a matter of reassembling, lining it all up. I've plugged the earth cable and the two connections back in, which I removed previously for the controls. And you can see the cable tied at the bottom there. So it's just a matter of refitting the screws. Like I said, there's four snake eye keys on the outside and six standard Phillips positive drive screws on the inner. So I'm just gonna start with the Phillips first, just put the six screws in. But I'm gonna fast forward this section also because there's quite a few. So I'm just gonna zip this forwards. And you can see me just put the last snake eye key back in there, just tightening it up. Now that that's done, all I've got to do now, put the uh, switch levers back on, or the selector levers back on. They just clip back on, like so. A lot harder to come off. And then just gonna fit these crumb trays, which should be emptied regular. And then uh, it's just a matter of cutting off this excess cable tie or nylon tie. Just chop that off with the scissors, just chop off the excess. Okay, just give, plug it in and give it a try. So as you can see here, press the eject button and it pops up. Whereas before it was sticking down the left hand side. Just give you a closer view, press eject, pop, toast pops up which means the toast will automatically pop up when it's uh, reached the right uh, temperature or toast. With that, thanks for watching once again and please subscribe.